the smoke looks like it cleared from the sky. It's just a bit of haze, but for the most part here anyways, it seems like it's kind of normal. And what's going on today? How about this one? Lots of talks before about, for example, Iranian drones and all that. How about this one where it looks like almost a copy of the US one. It says, Iran unveils armed drone resembling America's MQ-9 Reaper and says it could potentially reach Israel. That they literally reverse engineer US's, I guess, drone or something? It says, Iran's defense ministry unveiled a drone on Tuesday resembling America's armed MQ-9 Reaper. Iran state-run Erna News Agency published a photograph of the drone called the Mohajer 10 on display at conference marking Defense Industry Day with what appeared to be smoke machine fog underneath it. Interesting tidbits about the name because it says Mohajer means immigrant in Farsi and has been a drone line manufactured by the Islamic Republic since 1985. Ernest said the drone is able to fly up to 24,000 feet with a speed of 210 kilometers per hour carrying a bomb payload of up to 300 kilograms and as they say, it could be used as a drone just with cameras, for example, to do surveillance. And it seems like ultimately the reason why they announced it in this way is to show the world how, I guess, technologically advanced they are now. It says, today we can firmly introduce Iran as advanced and technologic nation to the world. Ricey said in comments aired on state television, he reiterated Iran's stance about friendly relations with all countries in the world, adding that Iran's armed forces will cut off any hand that will reach us out in an attempt to invade Iran. State TV reported, that doesn't sound very friendly, it's more like a threat, don't mess with us. But either way, I guess a lot of people, again, they're using drones for military purposes and I still wonder here, did they just reverse engineer their Reaper drones as an example? News of the wildfire is still going on here and this was kind of interesting as it was kind of a controversy where officials are actually igniting certain parts, I guess of the province and people are saying why are you doing that? It says here BC Wildfire Service defends plant ignition personnel numbers. Cliff Chapman of the BC Wildfire Service has addressed claims on social media concerning personnel numbers on the Bush Creek East Fire in the Shuswap and details of the August 17th plant ignition. The BC Wildfire Service undertook a plant ignition last week near Lee Creek and Scotch Creek in an effort to burn off fuel between the fire and previously established fire guards. The plan was to ignite the flames as winds were blowing from the south onto the fire itself. Winds were expected to shift from the north later that night on August 17th, at which time flames from the fire would approach the already burned stretch of land from the ignition. Chapman said the Bush Creek East Fire went above the control line that the BC Wildfire Service had burned off then swept back into the North Shuswap communities. Wouldn't that be something if part of the fire was actually a result of this where people, I guess, burned more areas than they intended and all that? Wouldn't that be crazy? It says, we were still successful in protecting some of those properties along the North Shuswap in the hundreds. Chapman said, unfortunately, we've also now seen the devastation the main body of that fire had in areas like Scotch Creek, Celestia and others and our hearts go out to those individuals who have seen the devastating impacts of that fire making its push. Here's my example too, in terms of filming stuff around fires and so forth. Can you imagine capturing something like this just by accident? It's important details, isn't it, for people to see, especially if they did something wrong? Imagine that again. How outraged would you be if they just blamed it on something else, but at the end of the day, it was a human error? And I guess with the skepticism, like some people here say, it's a risky maneuver doing a back burn, doing a controlled burn to try to stop a raging fire and they did it because they were concerned that the wind was going to blow it our way. So they did it just before the windstorm and as a result, instead of a large fire, it was an enormous fire, Cooperman said. And then the skepticism here says, I mean the media cannot take the word of the government at face value and not listen to the locals. I mean I was there, they lit the fire right behind our house, I could see it. It looked like a mushroom cloud. It wasn't successful at all. It made things far worse. They didn't take into account Lee Creek Canyon, so it crept under the power line where there was no fire guard and got into our community. That is crazy if that's all true. I mean, what would people say about that again? Especially with those previous stories where they don't want people filming the situation and all that. 
I think that's an example. You need the balance. If there's no, quote, danger to aviation and all that, you need more people documenting the situation. There's just more eyes and ears out there to see what's going on. Alright, see you guys later.